Welcome once again to my virtual tutorial class. Today we are dealing with a very basic question actually. Basic question for all students and particularly for literature students. Now this class uh, is a result of a question that we teachers often, often encounter. The question is how to write an answer. Now often our students ask this question actually. And to be honest, we usually give a short shrift to the question. We gloss it over. We don't give the uh, kind of attention that the question deserves. So I thought, why not deal with this uh, basic question in one of my virtual classes? So the topic of my class today is how to write an answer. Now, the question is problematic because uh, there's no one way of writing an answer one size does not fit all so uh, I wouldn't like, like, uh, like to claim that uh, this would give a uh, single answer to the question there could be many ways of writing an answer I'm only here attempting to uh, get at one such way and this class should not uh, suppress the freedom of the students on the contrary, the class should provoke the students into further experimentations. It should not limit them. It should not straightjacket them into following only one template as to how to write an answer. Uh, they, they should take this as a, a stimulus to actually think on their own, to make uh, experiments and write better answers. This is only one way of doing so. Let's take it that way. Now the question, how to write an answer? Now the, the an the answer to this question I prepared uh, partly on the basis of my experience as an examiner. So as we are teachers, we have to develop as examiners as well. And we, we, we have uh, the familiarity with answers that students write to questions on literature. So the first thing I would like to say as to how to write an answer is when you get a question in the exam hall, what students tend to do is they immediately start writing. They, uh, they go hammer and tongs writing the answer. There, they, what happens is they lose the plot sometimes there. Now, without uh, actually thinking about the question even a bit, they take the question for granted and uh, go straight away into the answer. That makes their answer often vague. They, they, they don't seem to hit the bull's eye. So the first thing I would like to tell you, um, how to write an answer. So when you get the question, don't immediately write the answer. What you on the contrary should do is, don't answer the question, question the question. Very important thing to know. Whenever you get a question in the question, in the exam hall, question the question. What I mean by it is that, give some respect to the question. The question deserves some respect. Don't take it for granted uh, the, and start writing what you have prepared at home. Give some time to the question. Reflect on the question. What is the question demanding? The question will have um, a particular emphasis. You will have to find out what exactly the question wants. And accordingly, you will have to start writing. Just don't... Uh, straight away start writing what you what students usually do is in a literature question for example if it's a question question on Shakespeare's Hamlet whatever the question is they uh, start writing the story of Hamlet therein they lose the plot the answer becomes vague and the examiner has to find out where the answer is so to avoid that what you need to do is question the question question the question means Take a minute, reflect on the question. What is the question asking of you? Accordingly, right? So give some respect to the question. That's the point. After that, we are in the pre-writing stage, actually. After that, do some rough work. Do some rough work. Do some mental work. Or you can do it on paper as well. Some rough work. You question the question. That is, you reflect the question. So you are on the question. You understand what the question is asking. So now is the time to think about what you, how you are going to answer the question. The points that you will use, the points that you will ex, expand in your answer. 
so the points will come to your mind at random so that will be the content of your answer the points now that those points need to be organized because the points will not come to you uh, in a particular pattern they will come at random so list them randomly the next stage what you do is you organize the points into a perfect whole give shape to it so give a form to it so content and form so your answer requires both content and form that means it has to have substance your answer should be precise it should have good matter and it should also be placed in a particular shape uh, to be impressive now how to organize the answer now here we actually go back to the Aristotelian uh, way again every answer should have a beginning a middle and an end as simple as that you have to organize your answer into these three parts beginning middle and end that will make the answer impressive impressive the examiner will uh, really uh, be tempted to read the answer you can call it introduction body and conclusion so your answer should have an introduction then the body of the answer and then conclusion but remember here this does not mean three paragraphs body of the answer can have according to the question it can have three paragraphs four paragraphs it depends introduction and conclusion usually one paragraph each, but it could uh, it could be more actually there's no definite number of paragraphs but otherwise the shape of the answer should be like this introduction body and conclusion now in a literature answer uh, you are expected to present an argument so the body of the answer will have an argument so you will have to present not one but multiple perspectives uh, you should you should in the introduction itself of course you will give you will give your thesis introduction will will be will give a, give us the direction your thesis will be presented in the uh, introduction itself and in the body of the bo body you will have to put the anti uh, antithesis and then the synthesis in the conclusion so thesis antithesis and synthesis that is the dialectics of your answer so literary answers will of course be dialectical it will be polemical yeah there will be uh, 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 there will be a, a, a kind of an argument a debate so uh, the present an argument now while you present the argument and in the conclusion you will give your uh, as i said the synthesis the body of the uh, answer and not necessarily the body it can come in the introduction or conclusion actually uh, as well you should have uh, have to substantiate your ideas uh, you should you should uh, logically prove your ideas now how to substantiate your ideas there uh, it has to be backed up your answer has to be backed up with your text reading you should read the text there's no 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 other way so you have to read the text and so you'll have to give textual um, quotations to substantiate the views you are expressing in your answer so every answer should have a couple of textual um, uh, quotes quotes from the text that will give the uh, give the examiner the sense that the student actually has read the text so uh, textual reading is a must and that you can prove by actually culling quotes from the text and using them not randomly mind you using them uh, uh, very cleverly to support some of your views in the answer that along with textual reference you should also give certain critical quotes so when you prepare a, a, a text you should also support it by reading certain uh, certain critical essays about it and uh, usually the critical essays you should read um, sh should be um, of conflicting natures that is uh, uh, a multiplicity of views you will get if you read two different kinds of critical essays two different strands of thought on a particular text so such quotes you need to put in your answers along with the textual quotes critical quotes critical quotes say of two critics uh, saying two different things on, on a particular text so then finally you you give your position or you can blend the two and come up with a new new position actually that is what will uh, will give 
the originality to, to your answer. So along with textual quotations and critical quotes, you should also give your own view and that will be your final summing up. So this is how a, an answer should be written in your uh, literature exams. It will, it will require a lot of background uh, reading, clever reading, then uh, selecting certain quotations to be used in your answers, reading of certain, so text should be written, uh, read, context should also be read. So critical essays need to be read. So certain important critics, their quotes you need to use in your answers cleverly at appropriate positions. Then you should give your own views, then divide the answer into beginning, middle and end. At the beginning, give some time, give some respect to the question, reflect on it, make a list. You can make a listing paragraph of the points you are using before you actually write. So that is the rough work. Uh, it's not doing rough work in the exams is not uh, the monopoly of mathematics students, mind you. Even you can do your rough work. So this is the, what you need to follow. And finally, you must remember as literature students, your examiners will be very ruthless as far as grammar is concerned. Your grammar must be impeccable. You cannot make grammar mistakes. You cannot write he have. It has to be he has. The moment you write he have, you lose your credibility. Then vocabulary. Yeah, you should have a good word stuff. And by vocabulary, I don't simply mean uh, general vocabulary. You should have a good command over the uh, technical vocabulary. That is, you should have a command over the register of literature. Every Topic has its own set of vocabulary, which is called register, topic specific vocabulary. Literature has its own register. So as students of literature, you should have a good command, good understanding of the register of literature so that when you write your answers, you're, you're, you, you can use such words which are perfect for the topic. And of course, spelling. So grammar, vocabulary and spelling, uh, you cannot take liberties with, the, with those. You should be uh, as I said, impeccable, immaculate, perfect with those to actually score uh, better marks in your exams. So I hope uh, this small brief essay into how to write an answer will help you. And as I said, this is not the only way. There will be many ways, but this I think will give you some idea how to proceed. And uh, you of course can think about an experiment and innovate. T take it as the launching pad. Next time when you write an answer, don't go um, hammer and tongs. Take some time, organize it, and hopefully you'll get good marks. So thank you.